Hey YouTube, today I'm going to do some reverse engineering to show you how to recreate one of the most classic sounds in hip hop and electronic music, the Roland TR-808 hi-hat. This past week I have been looking through the TR-808 schematic and synthesizing each component so that I could faithfully recreate each oscillator and filter in my synthesizer of choice, phase plant. I'm pretty happy with how faithful it sounds and it even grooves with other techno samples without any additional processing. And finally, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how we can get creative with the 808 recreation by swapping out the oscillators for more interesting wavetables, which creates tones that are adjacent to the original 808 but, um, and sound in tune with the original 808 but have different timbres. Um, all these different 808 variants are sort of in tune with each other so they blend really nicely and when you have two or more of these variants you can layer them together and have them call and respond with each other for really interesting techno samples. Neat. All right, let's dive into the technical part of this video. So at the beginning of the TR-808 service manual, they show this block diagram of the voicing board, which shows the overall idea of the design for the open hi-hat, closed hi-hat, uh, crash cymbal, and cowbell. And it's pretty interesting. These are all based off of the same uh, oscillators, all the same frequencies going into these different components, just being filtered and enveloped slightly differently. Um, so uh, for the open hi-hat and closed hi-hat, we're going to follow these square wave oscillators into the bandpass filter, which is a part of the cymbal circuit, and that will jump over to the open hi-hat and closed hi-hat, um, which gets an amplitude envelope into a high-pass filter. Um, I've also tried to simplify this diagram um, into showing we're just going to have six square oscillators into a bandpass filter into an amplitude envelope, into a high pass, and we're done. Adding square waves to phase plant should be really easy to do, but the tricky part is tuning those square waves. And I've seen a lot of people ask this question in forums online, how were the Roland TR-808 um, square wave oscillators tuned? Because that's like a key part to nailing the sound. Um, but all of the forums that I saw left that as an open question, like no one had the answer. Um, so I'm gonna do my best to give an accurate answer to that question. Um, so the first two oscillators do tell you roughly what the wave cycle should be um, for 1.85 milliseconds and 1.25 milliseconds. And I think the reason they give that is because there's a potentiometer to tune these oscillators um, for the cowbell, uh, since this is reused in the cowbell part of the circuit. Um, so just since you have to like tune it, I guess they're just giving you like roughly um, what the wave cycle should be uh, so you can, you know, make it sound like how they intended the cowbells to sound. Uh, but for the other four oscillators, there's no hints, so we're going to have to use circuit simulators. Here is a circuit simulation for one of the inverting Schmidt trigger oscillators in the TR-808 voicing board. And as you can see, there's only three components to this oscillator. So it's not only a really cheap way to make an oscillator for Roland, but it's also a really easy way to start understanding how analog oscillators work um, because of how simple it is. So this circuit, um, this middle component is called an inverting Schmidt trigger. And so basically it's always trying to make its output the opposite of what the input is. So if the input is at a, a low state, it tries to make its output the high state. And if its out input is the high state, it tries to make its output the low state. Um, so for example, in our square wave oscillator, if the input starts out at zero volts, it's going to try to bring this output up to five volts. But as it's doing that, that five volts is getting fed back into the input and will eventually charge this capacitor up to five volts. At which point, at which point it will need to try to drop it, its output voltage to zero volts. And this will keep fighting back and forth as the Schmidt trigger goes back between zero volts and high volts, which is how you get the square wave out of it. 
This square wave will be tuned based off of the component values for the resistor, the capacitor, as well as the internal properties of the Schmidt trigger. After simulating all the circuits, we can jump back over to phase plant and type in all of the frequencies for our square wave oscillators. How we're going to set static frequencies is by making sure this harmonic is set to zero, um, which will basically put this oscillator at zero hertz if the shift wasn't set. But then we are going to set the shift to our oscillator frequencies. The first one will be 204 hertz, 298 hertz, 366 hertz, 515 hertz, 540 hertz, and 800 hertz. That creates um, an inharmonic mess of square waves that sounds like this. Next, we want to recreate the bandpass filter. We're going to run another circuit simulation, but this time in the frequency domain, by injecting frequencies ranging from 20 hertz swept all the way up to 20 kilohertz so that we can measure the frequency response of the circuit across the audio audible range. And down below is that frequency response plotted. So pretty much we just need to match our, the shape of our bandpass filter to the shape of this frequency response. And we can see that there is a resonant peak around eight to nine kilohertz, which is the most important part of this circuit to recreate. Um, but another thing to note is that this circuit's really created by having a high pass filter cascaded with a low pass filter. And the low pass filter is the part that is resonant um, and they're actually not tuned to the same frequency. So rather than using a band pass filter in phase plant, we will want to use separate high pass and low pass components. Back in phase plant, we can enable a high pass filter tuned to seven kilohertz with a Q of 0.7 and a low pass filter tuned to 8.6 kilohertz with a Q of 2.9. And now our noise will sound like this. The rest of the circuit can easily be tuned by ear. So there's a little bit of extra saturation, which we will simulate with the overdrive with just 0.65 dB and a mix of 86%. And then there is another low pass filter just rolling off the high end a little bit, tuned to 20 kilohertz. And the ampl amplitude envelope will have a decay of 40 milliseconds, a, a sustain of zero, a release of 100 milliseconds, um, and the velocity is also going to be set to boost the decay up to uh, 1.2 seconds, just so that I can simulate an open hat um, by inputting a higher velocity note. Sounds like this. And finally, there is one final high pass filter tuned to about 3.4 kilohertz uh, with a Q of around 1.13, and it sounds like this with the high pass filter. A nice final touch to accurately simulate the 808 circuit is to add some drift and jitter to the oscillator frequency and pitch, and that is because those Schmidt trigger oscillators are sensitive to both temperature and supply voltage. And so um, basically they're not gonna be like one steady constant oscillator frequency. Um, they are going to have a lot of variation. Um, so if you play around with adding some random LFOs to the pulse width and the oscillator frequency, um, you can get some of that kind of more organic, alive sounding behavior out of your hi-hat. Um, and let's listen to before and after that. In the final part of this video, I want to show you some cool modifications you can make to get your own unique twist on a, the 808 sound. So um, in this case, I've created a custom wavetable, which sweeps from a square wave looking thing and then slowly a pulse wave gets added into it um, and just you get some nice different harmonics out of this wave. Um, and since that's a wavetable, you can kind of tune this to different frequencies or, or sorry, different wavetable positions. And I've added a little bit of randomness. So we, um, in different oscillators, we get different amounts of that pulse width. And that sounds like this. Uh, 
Another cool one, which is actually my favorite, is swapping out all of the square waves for this uh, pair FM one to three wavetable. And then likewise, uh, tuning the wavetable to something pleasant so I can show you what that sounds like. There's all the way on the one end where it's really just sine waves. And as we add the FM in, I think that has even more of that sort of random inharmonic noise that makes it sound a little more accurately like a hi-hat. Um, and then, as I mentioned in the beginning, all of these variations I've made are based off of the same fundamental frequencies of the 808 circuit. So they all sound really nice together, um, and you can sort of call and respond them with each other. So here um, I have two different hi-hat patterns, um, and I have the the variation of the pulse width modulation um, with the uh, FM sine wave, um, and they kind of call and respond with each other, um, but they blend really nicely together since they're based off of the same concept. Okay, I think that sounds pretty cool. If you found this tutorial useful, please consider giving it a like and follow along with the channel to see more content like this. I am going to play each of these examples with the loop one more time to close out the video. See you next time.